G'day folks, I guess we're on to session three now. And I, really for me, I would like to pull the policy statement up to the front of the document and then allow the policy statement to allude to the rest of the stuff within this document uh, supports the statement that we're giving. That's the way I would like to see it. Uh, really depends on who teaches your policy uh, uh, or where the policy is being applied. I guess some things like OHS policy might have standard formats. Government policy for things like uh, I don't know acquisitions and uh, dispersal of funds and so on and so forth, so forth might have strict uh, guidelines. For you guys, I just want you to get the understanding that uh, if those guidelines are in place, we need to adhere to them. But in this situation, you can use my template uh, as the example of how to develop a policy statement or a policy itself. All right, so we've already stated back in the background that we need to have this level of transparency. It goes through the whole document, and this will probably be the last time that I really write it up, because it's a long word. We need to make sure that what we say is transparent. We need to make sure that what we say is clear and concise. I think I spelled that right. Um, if we don't and it rambles on and it takes 10 pages to say what we want to say, people are going to lose interest and they're going to get confused. Really what we want this policy to do is to empower the document itself to be the overarching control uh, or the reporting guideline or the place that we go back to and refer to and say, hey, are we doing things right or are we doing things wrong? Really, the policy statement itself needs to say that in a very short the word sometimes is succinct, all right? So say it in the shortest possible amount of words, the shortest amount of words as possible, I should say, so that people don't lose interest and they don't get confused about it. Now you should see in my policy, in my policy statement over here, wherever the hell it is, I've got to switch pages here, I forget where I'm going to. Oops, I've actually skipped key abbreviations. We might just touch base on them really quickly rather than putting it into a whole other uh, lecture. We'll just touch base on them very quickly now. So key abbreviations uh, might be put at the start of the document so that readers or people referring to the document can clearly understand what the hell's going on when we start to shorten things down. So things like, you know, this commission for the conservation of the southern bluefin tuna, it's a long word and we can keep the document short by abbreviating it. But if we just whack CCSBT in there and someone comes along and, you know, it could be a fisher, it could be a stakeholder, they're just going to get pissed off and go, right, I don't have to call you and now I'm going to humbug you because I can't understand your policy. So keep the abbreviations in there if you use them. Sometimes you don't. So I've got a whole pile in here. It's not, you know, I could probably abbreviate half, you know, a whole lot more. But they're there. So if someone goes, oh, what's an LRP? What the hell is that? Oh, I don't have got no idea. They can come back up to the key abbreviations, refer to them, and they go, oh, I understand now that the limit reference point is what LRP is about. So, moving forward, my policy statement isn't huge, and I think if you actually look at it and you critique it yourself, you might see some strong points in it, but you might find some weak points in it as well. Uh, and there's always a weak point in a document and when it's initially created. Right? So consider this as the draft phase right now. This, I'm writing it as an individual, but the stakeholders might review it, my manager might review it, we might have a scientist review it, there might be a bundle of people in a, in a group that are actually going to review the policy and say, hey, this is not meeting this requirement. Well, actually, right off the mark there, the legislation doesn't even say that. We need to pull this back and so on and so forth. So I think if you look at it, there's some strong points in there. You know, I state that there's this biomass that we're trying to achieve. I give the fishery effective control on the 1st of January 2018 in a nominated time. Uh, I base uh, that we have a need to use this policy. Right? And then I state that target reference point of the TRP all right, as managed by the Southern Bluefin Tuna Management Plan of 1995 has been decreased while the limit reference point has not been lowered. So and that's directly what this chart refers to here. All right, so that's what we might call a, a fishing threshold. 
you know, so that we can say if we hit this lower limit down here, this limit reference point, we start hovering around this down here, we're still sustainable, but we're starting to think about, oh crap, if something goes wrong, uh, we overfish, for instance, by a tiny little bit, you know, we have a year of poor recruitment through the ocean acidification or global warming, this might start to drop away. All right, at the moment, we've set a target reference point of 4,400 tonnes, all right? And the history at the moment is showing that we've been above that, we've been above that, but now we're gonna set this at 4,400, and then hopefully what happens is we bounce around that, all right? But our CPUE changes. So we get better CPUE to, to achieve that. So we get more efficient at doing it. That would potentially indicate that uh, the stocks are bouncing back. It's easier to achieve the catch that we're after. You know, we might stick with that for five years, which is actually the review time frame built into the legislation attached to this. Uh, the legislation, this management plan up here, says the review time frames are five years. So we set it at five years and go, right, cool. We hit that and our CPUE is actually increased so we put less effort in to catch the same amount of fish we should starting to think about uh, all those spreadsheets we created a while back then we might say hey let's roll with it for another five years and see what happens and if our cpue continues to increase we can say righto all right let's now increase our quota back up by the 10 percent maybe 15 percent and see where we go so the fisheries policy this policy itself at this stage might be uh, recreated go back to our version control at the top, we might say version, you know, 2.1 2019, or sorry, it won't be 2019, it might be 2.1 2023, five years later. All right, and then from there on, the review time frame would become five years from there, we would keep assessing this, you know, is our catch creeping up and down like this over that, or is it down here, you know? So this is about establishing a room to move within our sustainable model, all right? So if we start hovering around this limit reference point, we need to think, oh crap, let's maybe, you know, bring in some more control. And in this state, sorry, not this state, within this fishery, the only can, real control that we have is the quota itself. There's no inputs, there's no minimizing time on water, there's no minimizing how much fuel we can carry, there's no minimizing engine size, there's no seasonal, closures, uh, there's no spatial closures other than marine parks attached, so on and so forth. So really, what we want the policy statement to say is, this policy is going to do this and this is how we are going to achieve it. Okay, that's really, and you might even go, here are the points that we need to achieve with inside this policy. It might be a reduction in bycatch, and this is how we're gonna reduce the bycatch. It might be a uh, reduction in bird entanglements, and this is how we're going to achieve that. Uh, and then give the power to the document, all right? So the policy itself can't be personalized, all right? So it needs to be, I'm gonna get, use the word independent of any independent of personality. All right, the I's, the we's, the us's, so on and so forth, really should be omitted. Don't write your policy like it's a school assignment. It should be a statement, all right, that is backed up with future or more evidence running through the document itself. So we come through the document, I've got my policy statement, we start to come down. Sorry, I've got to skip to the next page. And then we start to say, all right, here's our current position, bit of information in there. All right, here's the control. That's how the fishery is gonna be controlled. And we'll talk about that in the next session. All right, so go back, have a look at what you wanna do with the fishery. Sorry, back to here. All right, think about what you wanna do with the fishery. Try not to copy what I've done, but if that ends up where you are, that's where you are. But try and pull the really supporting information out of the APMA website or the CCSBT or other information from where you can source it uh, to build your policy. Now, I constructed this chart myself off the sustainable yield modeling. So CPUE, MSY, MEY, I went back in and then fluctuated 
I pulled the catch years out of my spreadsheet itself and then just plotted the years against the catch, plugged it into the chart and then drew on the, the limit reference points and the target reference points manually and then copied and pasted it in. So if you wanted to do something like that, you might want to just give me a tingle on the phone rather than giving you another seminar forum thing to look at. Uh, and I can maybe flick you across the data set so that you don't have to recreate the whole data set yourself. You can just um, create that chart yourself. That makes sense. So I'm going to leave it at that, but just try and remember that the policy itself, the statement needs to be transparent, it needs to be clear, it needs to be concise, and it needs to be independent of personality. Uh, and it needs to be real. It needs to be managing something that is a real, don't say oh, I'm gonna manage a biomass decrease uh, with a quota control when there's no need to do it. Uh, in this example, a lot of fishery scientists say that the current state of the fishery is on the increase. So we've come from 3% to 15 or 18% off the top of my head. The achievement is to try and achieve 20% biomass, 20% of virgin biomass by 2035, I think is the plan. Um, so I'm only using this as an example. I'm not gonna try and override what other fisheries managers are already doing. It's just an example of building a policy. So the things that I put in here are only examples. They're not things that I want people to challenge uh, in relation to the bureaucrats that actually build policy. So just consider that, have a look at what you might see inside the fishery and how, you know, why this policy needs to be implemented is the question. All right, and then the statement is, this is why we're going to do it. So think about that and then try and get a policy statement together for yourself in your own words with the right information or some realistic information, put it into your template and then when we're finished, you can send it across to me and I can have a look at it. All right, I'll see you soon.